In this video, I'm going to continue our discussion of reactions of alkenes, and in particular, the addition reactions of alkenes. So turning a double bond into a single bond between carbons while adding other groups onto those two carbons. And so in particular, in this video, I'll be talking about adding these, uh, these alcohol groups onto these double bonds. So the first one we'll talk about is the addition of water. So this is called the hydration of alkenes. And so we start with our alkene here and then when we add water to it, so we see we have two H's, one here, one here, and then an oxygen. So H2O is being added. And this will be in the Markovnikov orientation this way. So the the me mechanism for this is so we have this and so the electrons from this double bond which are more loosely bound to the carbons uh, is going to so a lot of times you see people do that so telling us that it's going to go onto that carbon so the electrons go there and then these ones uh, from that hydrogen oxygen bond move to the positively charged oxygen on the hydronium ion there and so we then break that double bond or the pi bond in the double bond so that we end up with this right here. So our hydrogen is bound to the carbon with the most number of other hydrogens or the least number of substituents so that we get the carbocation on the most stable carbon that we can get here. And so our hydronium has turned into this water here as well. Then we can bring in another water. I mean, it could be the same water if you wanted it to, but it doesn't have to be. This is in a, a uh, solution of water here. So we can then bring this in here and the water will then quickly bond to the carbocation there. And so we end up with the water bound like this with that positive uh, charge on the oxygen there. And then we go down here we can bring in yet another water and so this will come and we can pull that hydrogen off of there the electrons will move down to the oxygen and so we have now remade our hydronium ion and we have now put an OH here on this hydrocarbon chain on this propane here in the uh, in the uh, Markovnikov product so we've now made two propanol in the Markovnikov product so just like with the SN1 and eliminations, we are forming uh, a carbocation here, or at least in the uh, E1 elimination anyway, but we're forming a carbocation here. So again, we're going to have these electrons go here, pull off that hydrogen there, the electrons go onto the oxygen so that we end up with this. So what we see is that we have this carbocation here on this secondary carbon where next door to it we have this quaternary carbon here. And so we can have this actually move over here so that we can put that carbocation on what is now a tertiary carbon. So this one is now a, also a tertiary carbon, but we've now put the positive charge on the tertiary carbon by moving one of those methyl groups over to that secondary carbon. And so we can then get this so our our water here that I have in blue is going to then come down and bond to that carbon, that carbocation there. So we end up with this, then the rest of the reaction is just what we saw before. This comes, takes the hydrogen there, the electrons go to the oxygen. So we end up with our hydronium here and our alcohol. But now the alcohol is on a carbon that is one away from the carbon that the hydrogen went on to, and we had that rearrangement there. So with these, uh, with these hydration reactions here, or at least this kind here, the uh, hydration of the alkene for the addition of water, we can have these rearrangements going on for these reactions. So another way of doing this is what's called hydration by oxymercuration demercuration. And so they call it that because we're using this mercury uh, species right here. It's a mercury bound to uh, an acetate right there. And so this has a positive charge. And so it can act as an electrophile.
And so what we see is that this uh, will bind onto this carbon right here. So the least substituted carbon right there, then the water will come in uh, and bind to the more substituted carbon there. So the electrons from this are kind of going to that right there to bind that mercury species on there. Then we'll use sodium borohydride, which looks like this. It's NaBH4, and so this has these hydrides on it, where a hydride is uh, a hydrogen with two electrons on it and a negative charge. So, you know, a lot of times in chemistry, we're always we're, we're talking about the uh, hydrogen ions with a positive charge, but a hydride is one with a negative charge. And so this can actually come in. So if we want to look at it right here, we can have this like this with a negative charge. This will actually come in and do an SN2 uh, reaction on that carbon and kick that hydrogen off right there. And so we end up with the hydrogen on this hydrocarbon here. So and that will be in the Markovnikov orientation. And so if we want to look at this in a little bit more detail here, so again, the, the uh, mercury here, so this has two acetates on it. So we have this acetate here and this acetate here. Uh, but this acid, one of these acetates can actually come off of it. Uh, we see that this is a somewhat slow process because it's going to, going to favor the uh, double acetate on there. But one of these can come off so that we get our positively charged hydrogen species here, uh, which will actually have a lone pair on it as well. And so what we can do then after we've generated that species is we can have the electrons from here uh, sort of come uh, at this uh, mercury right here. And then we can have these electrons sort of move over onto that carbon right there so that we end up with this mercury, mercurium ion right here. Uh, and so it, the mercury is sort of bound to both of these carbons here. But what, uh, what we need to pay attention to is that one of these carbons is a secondary carbon and the other is a primary carbon. So we have a primary and secondary. So they both have a partial positive, but the secondary is going to carry more of that partial positive than the primary because it's more stable uh, with a positive charge on it because it is more substituted. So this water, when it comes in here, will come and attack the secondary carbon right there. And so that will uh, then push this these electrons off of here right back onto that, uh, onto that mercury there. And so we end up with this species right here. We can have this water come in, take one of those hydrogens off, uh, those go on to the oxygen there. And so we end up with this then with our our uh, alcohol group on it. Then we can have that sodium borohydride come in. So again, that's going to bring a hydride uh, ion right here. Uh, well, I should have put it over on this one, but we can have it come and attack that carbon right there and push this back off of here. And so then we uh, form our two propanol here. And so again, that's going to be with the uh, Markovnikov product there. So the alkoxy mercuration demercuration is just the same thing, but we can do this now with uh, species that are not water. So we could have any other R group on there rather than one of the hydrogens. And so instead of just putting an alcohol group on it, we can put this RO group on it. And so we are uh, generating this ether here. So we have this organomercurial ether here. Uh, we again bring in our sodium borohydride to kick off the uh, the uh, mercury species here and end up with the Markovnikov product. But now we have this ether on here rather than just an alcohol. And so the, the uh, mechanism for that is just going to be the same thing. All right, so we can also do the hydroboration of alkenes. And this is, again, putting on an alcohol group. Now we're forming the anti-Markovnikov product here. And so we see we have this over here. And uh, you'll also notice I have these threes here, and I'll get to that here in a little bit. 
Uh, but we are going to make three of these for each one of our boranes that we use. So borane being BH3, so boron with three hydrogens bound to it. And so we have this carbon here, which is a tertiary carbon, and this one, which is a secondary carbon. And what we find is that the, the, uh, the hydroxyl group here, the alcohol, is going to go on the uh, secondary carbon rather than on the tertiary carbon. So we're actually forming an anti-Markovnikov orientation on this. And like I said, for each for each borane, we're going to be forming three of these here. And so the borane, or oftentimes diborane, is the way that it actually exists. It looks kind of like this. And you'll often see it drawn the way I have it portrayed right here with these sort of weird curved bonds on here. And that's because in with boron, uh, what we see is that we actually have the hydrogens here sort of in between. So they're actually bound to two different things on here. But uh, each bond onto like a single one of these molecules is using a single electron here. So it's uh, we have two electrons uh, on the boron here, but we have one going to this hydrogen and one going to this hydrogen. Whereas on the other boron, we have again, one going to this hydrogen and one going to this hydrogen. So we have kind of a weird sort of uh, bond going on here with this diborane. Uh, and like I said, this is actually the way that it's going to be favored to be in, in the real world. So that's why I show the equilibrium favoring this uh, diborane over here. Uh, over here is just the borane, which uh, is the boron with the three hydrogens on it, and we have this vacant p orbital here uh, on these borons. And so this diborane itself, and boron in general, is quite unstable. And the, you know the reason for that is because what you'll notice here on these is that we do not have a full octet on the boron. In fact, we have this vacant p orbital here, and so it wants to react with things pretty strongly. And so uh, this borane, this diborane, is actually going to be quite unstable and even explosive uh, in the real world. And so quite often what you see is this, where they bind it to the tetrahydrofuran, this THF. So we have the two THFs plus this diborane here, and so we end up with two uh, boranes THF complexes and so you'll often see that as the BH3 dot THF here so the boring THF complex and so this is usually the way that this is actually used because this is going to be more stable because we can now see that our boron is going to have a full octet here and so the reason that this forms the anti-Markovnikov uh, orientation is actually, and this is actually attributed to the uh, the sort of second version of the Markovnikov principle I talked about in the previous video, and that's that we're going to want to get to the more stable transition state. And so in, with the uh, borane here, the more stable transition state is actually going to be this one here. That's because we are putting this, uh, this positive charge onto this tertiary carbon right here when we're in the transition state. So these dashed lines being sort of partial bonds here. And so then we end up with the hydrogen actually going to the tertiary carbon here rather than onto the least substituted carbon. So we end up with our BH2 on here. And so uh, then it'll be on that carbon that the BH2 is attached to that we put another group onto. And so we're actually putting our hydrogen onto the more substituted carbon there. And so we end up with the anti-Markovnikov orientation. All right, so I, I uh, well, we'll get to the, I thought this is stoichiometry for a second, but this is the stereochemistry, which we'll talk about here. So we have the, uh, the borane here coming in. It could attach to this double bond either coming in from the top or from the bottom here. And so we could end up with this or this right here with that borane 
uh, sort of partially bonding to either the top or the bottom of this uh, this cyclopentane here. And so we get the we st we're still getting the partial positive here on the more substituted carbon. So we're, we will get that anti-Markovnikov product. And so then we end up with this right here. So we uh, then put our our uh, boranes onto this carbon, but it could either be pointed down or pointed up. And so we can get the two different. Uh, uh, mixtures or the enantiomers here. So we can get a racemic mixture of the enantiomers here. So we could have the RR1 here or we could have the SS1 here. And so uh, when we have a when we have something that looks like this like this uh, cyclopentene here we can get both the R and the S enantiomer from this using this uh, this boronation here. All right, so this is the stoichiometry I wanted to talk about here. So we see we have our borane here. We're bringing in one of our alkenes here. It's going to put one of those hydrogens on here. We get the BH2 on this other one. We bring in another alkene. It's going to put its other hydrogen onto that one. Uh, and then it's going to bond to the boron there so that we end up with two of these on it then we bring in a third of these alkenes and go through the same thing so that we end up with this so that we end up with over here we'll have our boron so it's our boron and it's bound to uh, you know three of these things which are our R groups here so these alkenes being our R groups and so we can get three of them bound onto this boron here and so that's why for each boron, we are making three of our uh, of our uh, additions here onto the alkene. All right, so we can look at the oxidation of borane to alcohol here with that in mind up there. So uh, now we're adding this hydrogen peroxide here and this uh, this hydroxide ion right here. And so this hydrogen peroxide is going to be deprotonated by the hydroxide so that we get this hydro peroxide here. So then we have our boron bound to our three groups like we have up here. So bound to our three different, uh, well, what used to be alkenes, but are now uh, alkanes bound to this boron here. So we have three of those bound to it there. We bring in our deprotonated uh hydrogen peroxide here so this is going to come and bind onto that boron right there so that we get this species right here this R group is actually going to migrate over to this O right here which is going to kick off this OH right here so we now have that R group bound to the oxygen and we are kicking off this uh, OH right here down here, we're just doing this two more times so that we end up with this. So our R groups all migrating over to those oxygens. We're uh, kicking off, uh, there should actually be, I guess, a two in front of here because we're actually kicking off two more uh, hydroxides there. Uh, but then we can bring in the hydroxide. Uh, we, you know, it could be the same one or it could be a different one. It doesn't really matter. We just bring in hydroxide. This will come in and bond to that boron there. Because remember that boron has that unfilled P orbital that likes to get bound to things. And so we bring in that, uh, that hydroxide there and we end up with this species right here. Uh, and then we can have this kick off one of these uh, groups right here. So now we've put this oxygen onto our our onto our our group right here. And so we can do this two more times, kicking off each of these R groups with the oxygen bound, so that we end up with three of them right here. And our boron is now bound to these three hydroxides. Then we can take our three uh, R groups with the oxygen bound to it. We can have this react with the water. This will go there. The electrons move to the oxygen so that we end up with our alcohol groups right here. And then we kick off three more of these hydroxides right here. And so we are, you know, regaining all of the hydroxides that we lost throughout this process. And so that is the oxidation of the boring step right there.
Uh, and so yeah, that was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So uh, just again, to kind of go over it real quick, what we're doing in this is the hydration of alkenes. So uh, when we do it with water, we get the Markovnikov orientation here. So we're putting an alcohol group on there in the Markovnikov orientation. Uh, we can undergo these rearrangements, so it, it is possible that we can have the alcohol add to a carbon that is, uh, you know, that is one further away from our hydrogen here if we have a rearrangement. We can also do this by the oxymercuration, demercuration, which is also going to give us the Markovnikov orientation here. Uh, so we can do this uh, with the uh, the mercury species there. Uh, we can also do it with an alkoxy mercuration. So instead of putting an alcohol group on there, we're putting an ether group onto there. Uh, but then we can also do the hydroboration of alkenes. And for that, we will end up with our anti-Markovnikov orientation. And that is because uh, we end up with this as our more stable transition state, where we have the partial positive uh, on this carbon right here, which is forming that bond with the hydrogen. And so uh, that's going to form the anti-Markovnikov orientation. Uh, but with the hydroboration, we do get a racemic mixture of our uh, of our enantiomers here. And so uh, that is something else you'd want to watch out for when doing this reaction. Uh, we'll see in future videos that there, you know, people have come up with different ways of trying to get uh, one enantiomer over the other, but a lot of times with these reactions and uh, with the uh, the hydroboration here uh, that I've been talking about, we will get a racemic mixture of these. And so, yeah, the other thing is just that it's three alkenes per one borane. So for every uh, mole of borane, you can get three moles of your alcohol from it. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.